All right, guys, welcome into our first ever off-season shakedown. We're going to be going over um, some of the different moves that happened in the LEC, LCS, LPL, and LCK with our good friend Rocket on the call. Say hi, everybody. All right. (laughs) So we're going to go with the most dominant region first uh, that has the most amount of moves, and, you know, I just like them more than the LCS, Um, which will be the LEC. These will be – these teams are going off of – the standings will be based off of how they standed last year at the end of the year. So the first team we're going to go into is G2 Esports. Not a lot of moves here to really talk about outside of the fact that Promise Q has been released from the team, more than likely because he has signed with another team, and then that the team is still rumored into adding a support um, to back up Mickey X. That's the big rumor that's spreading around. We'll see what actually happens. Yeah, hopefully they do actually add a support. Obviously with Mickey X's hand injury. Yeah, you would hope they that... They do kind of need a support, but... I really think, like I was telling you yesterday on when we were talking about this, I really think they could use support to just allow Mickey X to rest a split and they put in another support and then for that yeah, split yeah. to build chemistry and then they can just go from there. I think that'd be really nice. Um, I think what G2 are probably doing, they're just trying to... They might just try and sign like a younger um, support so that that way they can give like a younger support experience as well. Yeah. If they ever need to sub him in. Yep, and then moving on down, we have um, Fnatic. Um, Fnatic lost Broxa and Yellowstar. The big move was that Broxa went to That's TL. Young <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, young <laughs> Buck. Long yeah, <laughs> y- Young Buck. Listen, it's Fnatic of old, okay? So Broxa loses. Broxa goes to TL. Um, the five-star general, otherwise known as Young Buck, goes to Excel to be the head coach. They add Mithy, interesting enough, as the head coach of Fnatic, and he retires from Origin. And then they add self-made as the jungler from SK Gaming. What do you think so far? Um, so self-made is a really good one. Obviously, in the spring and summer split, he was very at MVP like a lot of times in the games that SK won. Um, so he's clearly sort of proven in in his first couple of splits to be a really good jungler. Yes. Um, he's gonna have a real test being on, you know, going to the the team that plays second last last split and the second biggest fan base in EU. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's it's really these, this next split is going to be like sort of a way to test like because with with self made it was sort of a question of whether is he just like the best player on a bad team or is he actually a decent player? I think that's gonna yeah. Be a real test is he is he going to be is he going to be the next Yankos? Is what I would suggest because Yankos yeah, I was think it's the same with uh, oh yeah so sorry keep going <laughs> yeah because I mean Yankos was like when he was on H two K he wasn't like. He was known as one of the better junglers in the region, and it was he wasn't like especially when he when when he was with there with Fibiven, it was like oh wow like this guy's really good, but we don't know what his ceiling is. So yeah yeah yeah. This gives them the opportunity to get that ceiling with self made. Next team moving on is Splice. Splice has a lot of question marks on their team. They lost Zerse, Kabe, Norskaren. Um, Norse, uh, Norskaren went to XL. Kabe went to TSM, and Zerse went to OG. And then their top laner, Vizachachi, retired. So the only man left on that roster as of now is Humanoid. Uh, we don't know anything about the coaching staff, any other moves like that. That's all we know so far. So lots of different pieces that can be added to this roster. It'll be exciting to track to see what happens. Yeah, definitely. Um, because they have a, they obviously they have a like a essentially what you call an academy team uh, that plays in. I've actually forgotten which league they're in. I think it's the French league. I'm I'm not 100 percent sure, but um. I'm hoping that they don't resort to bringing those younger players up because obviously this is the third place team. Um, if they bring up a young team like that, they're they're not going to be finishing third at the end of the year. Uh, yeah, so they'll be they'll be competing with most. Hopefully, misfits. they can uh, sign some really good players. Yep. Moving on, the big news after that is Schalke. Schalke let go of about almost all of her team. Um, upset, Trick and Ignar are all gone. Upset goes to OG. Trick is still unsigned at the time of this recording. And Ignar goes to FlyQuest. Odoamne gets re-signed. Forgiven, Pog, is back as the AD carry. And Abadabe is the still the mid laner of the team. So the team needs are jungle if Memento doesn't start. And then the support role is still in question. All right. this is, It's pretty exciting, actually, to see Schalke. The fact that um, from the start, they basically mm-hmm. said, oh, four players from Schalke are free agents. The only one that isn't a free agent is literally the rookie player in Abadabe. Um, and then, you know, after, after officially losing upset, I was just like, uh, I don't know how this team is going to be a fourth place team again, but bringing Forgiven back is actually pretty exciting. 
Yeah, it'll be exciting um, to see what they been, do with support. Uh, I'm trying to actually remember the last time. I, it was either 2016 or 2017 was the last time he was uh, on an on an EU LCS team. So it'll be really exciting to see uh, yeah, if he's as good as he was back then. It was 2016 when he played and they made Worlds with Edge 2K. Um, moving on, Rogue makes some big splashes. I personally like the Rogue lineup. Um, they re-signed Vander, which is very important, especially when Forgiven's back on the market. You know, could have stole him away. And then Hans Sama, the Misfits carry, goes to Rogue to play AD carry. I think it's great. Um, I think Hans Sama's a really good underrated AD carry in the league. People kind of forget that he's there, and he's still one of the better ADs in that in that region. Yeah, it's really exciting uh, that they have... They brought in, obviously, another young player in Hans Sama uh, to play alongside uh, the young players that they already have, the likes of Finn, uh, Inspired, and Larson. Uh, and then, along with that, they re-signed Vander, who is essentially the veteran player on the team. They have the potential of being the younger G2 Esports. If they potentially, all, potentially. If they cap out to be at that potential mark, we'll see what happens. Uh, moving on, Vitality is a lot of question marks with this team. Tezuke will not return to the team. And they don't know what they're going to do with Mowgli. Um, so right now, their team needs are mid and jungle, obviously. Um, self-made left SK Gaming, which is the next team on our list. SK has pretty much everyone. They re-signed Sakre, um to an extension. So they have all of the roles pretty much situated except for the jungle position. So that'll be the next team. Um, SK is not a team that really wows me. I think they'd be bottom of the bottom of the floor mat. Yeah, I agree. I of agree. the LEC, but we'll go into the standings a little bit later. Um, for OG, OG made a lot of great moves, uh, which was needed because OG's a org that has always had high expectations from when they first started into the league and they made their run to Worlds when they first came out. They were have always been the team that just their fans expect nothing but the best. They have Xpeke as their owner, Deficio as the GM. So you, you have the highest of expectations for this team. Um, so that's OG. Mickey, ret- Mithy, I'm sorry, retires. Goes to Coach Fnatic. Patrick leaves to XL, but they do sign Zerse. Huge pickup. Upset. Humongous pickup. And then the unknown quantity here is Destiny, who, if you were watching Worlds, he was the support for Mammoth. Yeah, the biggest upgrade that they had was definitely um, was definitely upset over Patrick. Yes. Uh, I I didn't. I mean, a lot of people obviously rate Patrick highly. I I personally don't. I don't think he's as good as a lot of people say. Um, so for that reason, and because I think upset, you know, if anything, I overrate upset. So I think this is a a big upgrade. Um, Who was their was jungler? Cold. Cold. That's for, right. For um, I think. I think Zerse is the better jungler in the cold. Yes. Uh, so I think that was an improvement as well. And then they also bring in Destiny, who I I think this was quite, uh, to me at least, it was this was quite a random signing because there are definitely plenty of, um, of supports. EU supports that they could or have or even Korean supports. Mm-hmm. Like, but I from many other regions, but they decided OCE. It's very in, it's very interesting so. because if you look back at Upset's career, he's always played with Korean supports. So. Maybe they just wanted to get away from that trend and not play him with a, with a Korean support. He's also played with uh, experienced supports a lot. Yes. Like so him as the rookie. So this will be like the first time he's like the more experienced player on the bot lane. Yes. All right, moving on down to Misfits. Misfits has a lot of question marks. Um, Misfits lost Hansama. Max Lord's a free agent. Soaz is a free agent. Gorilla's a free agent. Gorilla's rumored to go back to the LCK. Soaz is reportedly trying to get a deal in the LPL. Um, I don't think it'll be as a player, but we'll see what happens. And then um, they signed the Giants um, Super Liga team. Uh, the junglers, his name is Resork, and the support, Denik. Um Misfits looks like they are a team that went from, hey, we spent so much money the last year on building the super team, and it crashed and burned, that now they're taking this year, and they're like, you know what? We're going re- gonna, to we're gonna build our young talent. So much what team later that we'll get to an NA. Build our young talent and just see how they do and go from there. They've sort of gone from uh they've gone from super team to like super youth team. Yes. That's basically what they've done in the space yes. of one one season. <laughs> yep. It'll be very interesting to see what their coach does with him. Um Musifaz, I think is his name. Um he's a pretty good coach. We'll see what he does. Um obviously he couldn't handle the different perplexities that came with um, handling a super team. So we'll see what happens with this team. 
Um, moving on to Excel, Excel made a lot of splashy moves if you th- consider these people good players. Um, Young Buck is now the coach. Again, if you consider Young Buck a good coach because he's won five championships or just the teams that he's been on have been good, then you can consider him a good coach. Um, I think he's a little bit overrated as a coach, personally, but that's just me. Um, they, sired, they signed the most overrated support to ever play this <laughs> game as their support in North Scarin. They wanted that's great, and then they then they combined it with a mediocre Edie Carey and Patrick. So Excel signs a mediocre bot lane. They don't have mid laner. Who's their jungler? Uh, Kajol. Kajol. Kajol's a great jungler. So they need to work. They need to have someone that will work with Kajol to make that team good. That's my expectations for that team. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. They they definitely because uh, the Excel bot lane. Uh, Who's it? It was Mystiques and Jeskla, I think it yep. was? Yeah, it was. Uh, I think the bot lane is definitely an improvement on XL. Obviously, having Young Buck as a coach is huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you know, they call him the five-star general. He is a top coach in EU. It's going to be really interesting to see where XL ends up. I definitely don't think they're going to be a bottom team by any... I think they're going to be, like, competing for playoffs. Wow. Uh that, that's my prediction. I guess I mean we'll, I guess you we'll do. Predictions. I guess yeah. So <laughs> let's bring up the LEC pr- pr- playoff predictions right now. Mm-hmm. So we have one. I think we can both unanimously agree that G two will be number one. Uh yeah, easily, easily. Two. Who do you have? Um, it's I think the the second and third kind of similar to um to the spring split that we had this year. It's going to be between Origin and Fnatic. Okay. Um, I personally put Origin. I think Origin. Yeah, be- I 100 percent think cause... that Origin because you have the reason why I will predict Origin as well is because they have the proven commodity as a coach. Origin's coach has been there; it's the same coach they had last year. Their team has more talent and more proven talent than that of Fnatic. I think adding a jungler who was good on a bad team is hard to see how he's going to do. And then obviously you're adding a coach who's never coached before. So with that, I'll put Fnatic at three. Just because I feel like after your top three, the L- the LEC gets it's very top heavy, similar to the LCS, where there's some really really good teams and there's everyone else. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. Even though you know, for some reason, God knows why L- L- LCS just finds this way of like having like eight teams that can make the playoffs the last game of the ga- last game of the freaking season. I don't know why, but it always happens. So moving on um, to number four, who would you put? Um. So. Well, first I'll say it's it's kind of hard to predict some teams because you take like a uh, Splice for example. We have no clue where Splice are going to be with, with yes. their team. Yes. Yep. Um. So it's kind of hard to put them in a position. Um. So I've predicted that Schalke are going to sign good player. Uh, they're going to sign a good support. Um. Even with Memento as jungler, I still think they're like I would put them as a fourth place team. Yeah. Personally. So my biggest caveat to Schalke would be Rogue. So that I would actually have rogue fifth. So yeah. So that's like <laughs> I, that's what I feel like between like same thing with two and three. I feel like it's the same thing with four and five that Shaka and Rogue can easily f- flip and positions, and then you could see one being four or one being five. I also think there's a very high possibility that Rogue might be better than Fnatic, but that's to be seen with how they are, how they do. So that's also something that could possibly happen that you could eventually see Rogue as being one of the top three teams in Europe. Um, but that's we have to see how Fnatic plays. We have to see how Rogue plays, and then your last playoff team would be. Uh, so I I put XL. XL. <laughs> I think the last playoff spot. It, my prediction is it will be between XL and Vitality. So you'll put Vitality at seven. Mhm. Let me think. And then I missed an. Oh yeah, Misfits. Misfits is what I'm missing. Are we missing teams? Wait. No, this is everyone. Oh, so who's the doormats? SK Gaming? Uh, yeah, SK and Splice. Oh, I put I put Splice lower, obviously, because I don't know what their team is going to be like. Mm-hmm. The thing is, potentially, they could have like a, a star-filled team, and obviously they would be predicted much, much higher. Yep. Oh, wait. This is not Misfits. You can <laughs> yeah, have Misfits. So, yeah. I, I definitely put SK as like a, a bot. Yeah, team. I definitely agree with these. Um, All of these predictions. Um... You know, I always have a soft spot for Origin. I just think Origin is the better org than Fnatic, but people love mm-hmm. Fnatic because 
they've been there forever and all this great stuff, yada, yada, yada. That's great. I still think they're not that great of an org, yeah, but... A lot, of the, uh, a lot of the Fnatic fans went to Origin, obviously, because... X obviously. Is... Yep. Um, so moving on to the uh, dumpster fire that is the LCS. Obviously, <laughs> the LCS has had to make a lot of decisions on what they want to do because they have gone... They did horrible in Worlds, just just play it that way. None of their teams have been out of the groups. The first time it's happened in a couple of years now, because usually C9 is a team that gets you out of groups. Um, obviously, you know, the, a couple of the groups were very difficult for the NA representatives to do anything in. Um, but there were still no excuses for the fact that none of their teams, especially with the rosters and all that, that they're paying. So you knew there was going to be some shakeup, and boy, do we have shakeup. The first thing is <laughs> the, the first team... The number one team, the powerhouse who has won four splits in a row, has gotten rid of their jungler in X Smithy, and they have brought Broxa to TL. Yep, they've made the best team even better, basically. Basically, yeah. I mean, I've always thought that X Smithy has always he's a consistent player because you can see that in every team that he goes to, even when he was in Mortals, they make playoffs, they do well. Um, I don't think he's like flashy player who can individually win you a game. Whereas I feel like Broxa can take over a game very easily. He can also lose you a game very easily. But it's I think in the jungle position, it's good to have those coin flip players um, that will help you win games than having someone who's just going to be passive. I also think Broxa has shown up more in the international stage than X Smithy ever has. So I feel like that in that sense, Broxa is a much play, better player than X Smithy. Yeah, he's the much more aggressive jungler, which like in today's meta is much more. It, it's much more meta to be the much more like, you know, more aggressive jungler. Yes. Whereas, like like you said, X Smithy, you feel I feel like he's been very, sort of passive. He performs very well like domestically when he actually plays in the, in the LCS. But then as soon as you watch him play internationally, it's like a, it's like a different jungler. Yeah, he's he's known for being a tracking jungler, which sometimes when you play against people who have creative routes in the world's meta, especially the LPL teams, it's very hard to keep track of them. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the team that has the most news is C9. C9 completely blew up their franchise. They are basically starting from scratch. The only players that are still on their team from their active roster from 2019 is Licorice and Niski. Um, and no one else on their starting roster is on that team anymore because Zazel... Sven and Kumo and Definitely were all traded to Evil Geniuses, who are the brand new team in the, that have taken over FlyQuest, no, Echo Fox's um, mm -hmm. franchise. Um, Vulcan, which was bought out for $1.5 million from C9, which is the reason why I make it a big emphasis on this deal is because Jack, the owner of C9, has never paid this much money for anyone. Jack is the player who will take a Broken Sven Skarin and turn him into a summer split MVP. He's always a player who goes low and bets high. So the fact that he paid high and is hopefully betting high on a player who honestly didn't really do anything until the second half of the summer split when Clutch Gaming brought in Cody's son, that Clutch Gaming became something and then they flamed out in Worlds. It'll be very interesting to see how Vulcan plays. I would even consider him a top three support in his own region. So the fact that he's making $1.5 million is absolutely insane. Um, but moving on, Sneaky not coming back to C9. It, is, it was announced the second that Sven got announced as the C9 AD carry. He was streaming, and he did say he was not going to come back to C9. Golden Glue gets traded to Golden Guardians from the Academy roster. Reaper has already been announced. That he is not longer. He is no longer the coach of C9. Uh, and then, obviously, you still have the pillars of Licorice and Niski, so they'll need a jungler if Blabber doesn't start. Yeah, I guess they they do technically have a full roster as of, as of now. Yes. Um, they have the option to 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 get other players if needed. Yep. Um, but yeah, sort of a lot of changes to this team. This is kind of the team that's more known for having the younger players that they're developing and making into better players. And it seems like the only the only player that they've signed is like a an experienced you know veteran player. I'd call him a veteran player. He's been yes, he's since, been playing a long time. Like 20, 13, 20, 14. Yeah. Um, so it it seems like they're going more down that direction than just selling off their their younger players. It's also very um, interesting because C9 has always been the team that has done the opposite of TL. TL has always been the team that pays high to get a stacked roster, mm -hmm. whereas C9's always stayed with their gut 
and stay with the players. I mean, Sneak has been on that team for, what, seven years now? A lot of their players have been consistent. They're not normally the team to blow up their entire roster. They'll make, like, one or two moves that overall increasingly makes their team better. So the fact yeah. that you see C9 being the team that does a TL and they wipe the slate clean is very surprising, which is why everyone is in shock that C9 did this. We'll see how it pans out in the long run um, and how that goes. Um, moving on down to keep this list going, we have CLG. CLG um, roster is pretty much set with Ruin. Um, what's the name of their jungler? Uh, Moon? No, it's not Moon. Oh, no, it's not Moon. No. <laughs> I really, whatever, uh, he's, he's not important. Um, so <laughs> they don't have a mid laner because Power Vivo is now a free agent. There's a very high likelihood, however... That he still goes back to CLG. Just he Power Revo is the kind of player that likes to make the most amount of money possible. So he will wait to the very last second when a team desperately needs a mid. They'd sign him up for a lot of money. So that's his that's what his trademark is. So more than likely he will still go back to CLG as their mid laner. But there's also obvious other opportunities for a couple other mid laners to show up. And then the biggest thing that happened with CLG, Biofrost gets traded to goes back to TSM. For Smoothie. This is Smoothie's third team in third years. Biofrost obviously was in CLG for two years. Now goes back to TSM. It's a huge trade. Um, you could take it as who won. Um, personally, I think Bio TSM wins because Biofrost is the much better support. He has better sh shot calling now than Smoothie did. Smoothie's kind of been washed up ever since he left C9. That's my personal opinion. Um, I just don't think he meshes well with a lot of people. And he also gets very tilted in games. So I just think that Biofrost is the more... He's also just a very easy person to put as your face of your franchise um, like he was for CLG for the last two years. So that's my opinion on CLG. Yeah, you could definitely see Smoothie had like a, a mental boom, as you call it, in, uh, yeah. in, in TSM games. like Especially when they lost in region regional qualifiers, he literally looked like he was going to blow up. Yeah. <laughs> like it was not pretty. You could tell. I mean, he's an emotional player, which, you know, there's not a lot of them in the LCS, but he's definitely an emotional player. And with emotional players, they do get tilted, and, you know, they can throw you some games sometimes. Yeah. Um, moving on down, we have TSM. TSM Bjergsen, the biggest free agent, if he was one, signed an extension, two-year extension with TSM that also makes him a part owner. So basically he's not going anywhere. He will always be a part of TSM. They re they released Sven, Zix, their coach, Akadia, and Spika, and Grig, so their jungler carousel is now gone. Uh, they let go of Zix as their head coach, so now they need to find a new head coach once again, they, which is the TSM way of hiring a coach and then letting him go after a year for four years in a row now. They need a new coach. Um, Smoothie, obviously, as we just said, got traded to CLG for Biofrost, huge upgrade. And then the biggest news is that Kabe from Splice comes to North America to play for TSM. I personally consider this a humongous upgrade over um, Sven. Sven, even when he came to TSM, was kind of on a downward trend. When he was on G2, it wasn't OG um, Sven. It was G2 OG Sven. Niels. OG Niels. It was G2 <laughs> Sven, who wasn't really that good. So I feel like Kabe playing the best he's ever played um, this year when he was on Splice, hard carrying that team, being Mr. Reliable, as they call him, because he's great in late-game team fights. Um, he always will be there. He's not one that's going to throw all your games for you. Um, he's very consistent. I feel like he's exactly what TSM needs to put alongside Bro um, Broken Blade and Bjergsen, the two Bs. And then they obviously still need to find a jungler. The rumors are either Amazing or Medios. I personally would like to see Amazing, not Medios. I don't think Medios fits Bjergsen's play style at all. So I definitely would like to see Amazing play for TSM. Yeah, I'd also like to see um, Amazing. But yeah, I think the bot lane was a huge upgrade. And I think that's sort of the biggest yes. headline for TSM yeah. in, this, uh, in this trade. Yeah. Um, sorry, I thought you were going to say something. No, um, no. I, I think, uh, as you said, Kobe is like Mr. Reliable. Um, they Obviously, they've had like really good ADCs. in. in they, they've had like double lifts before as well. They've had, you know, Wild Turtle when, when he was good. Yep. His, still, his, he, his good old days. He um, still plays. And it's always like I've always felt that like that's kind of their their style at TSM. They always have this like hyper carry, like AD carry kind of player, um, who they rely heavily on. And I think Kave he fits the profile perfectly there. Yes, um, I agree. I agree. And also one thing you mentioned is that he is strong in like uh, late game team fights, which I think also fits TSM's playstyle because 
they they're very much mid to late game team fight kind of team. Yeah, so. they're not the early game team that everyone likes to see. They're not the one lane one game team like TL can be. Um, TSM's yeah. definitely the mid late game. Um, they power up and then they get going. They get Bjergsen roaming and he he and the jungler empower their side lanes. Which is why I think it'll be very important for them to get a very good jungler, not a mediocre jungler. And then obviously to see who their head coach is. There's been rumors that Reaper would go to TSM to be the TSM head coach. Um, I think they definitely need to shell out some money to get a good head coach in that team. That's yeah, that they need a head coach. The coaching is important. Going on to the clown fiesta of um, NA, as I call them, Dignitas, the franchise who apparently doesn't know anything what they're doing. Um, they signed Huni, the most washed up top laner, to a two point three million dollar deal to now play mid lane, reportedly. Vulcan gets bought out for one point five million dollars, so they're geniuses for that. They're dumb for letting Huni get a two point three million dollar deal. Huni basically has now control of the entire roster of whatever Dignitas wants to do. Lyra gets let go, Demonte, which is my biggest pet peeve, gets let go from the team. Um, so now this team needs possibly a top laner if Huni's playing mid. They need a jungler, and they need a support to fit Cody's son. Um, there's not a lot of good supports out there, so it'll be very interesting to see what they do. I really don't hope they put Aphromoo with Cody's son, and then obviously they need a jungler, which I could see Dignitas getting a Medios. That's my favorite for Medios is that team. Yeah, and just think about who would go on that team. Do, which import slots have they filled? Do they, do they have all their import slots? They have more because obviously across other regions they there, there are a lot of very good support options. But actually in NA, there's the rumors. There are a lot of good ones in the free agency. The rumors that I have heard is that they want to get Peanut to be their jungler, and they want to get Gorilla to be their support. However, that is very unlikely because um, Peanut has been linked to go to NA teams in the past and now again this year. But Gorilla really seems like he wants to go back to the LCK. So yeah, yeah. I just don't see a world unless they get someone else, like maybe the Gen G support who just played with, with Peanut and they do that. But it's I just don't see it being Gorilla. I also I mean, let's get this straight. If Clutch put together a roster of two import, they're gonna have one of the highest paying rosters for sure in the entire league. And this team will have pressure from day one to play well. I mean, that's what happens when you pay them the big bucks. I I think the most absurd part is about, about the Huni deal is that he's being paid to play a lane that he's never played. He has not played professionally yet. Yes. So, um, I think it's madness, it's, it, especially when you consider the fact of how many good mid laners actually play in the NA region. Um, it's the most stacked position by far in NA. Yeah. That mm -hmm. it'll make it very hard for him to do what he wants to do, but we'll see moving forward. Moving on to my favorite team, it's 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves has Papa Smithy come in as the GM of 100 Thieves, and then they hired Zix, the former TSM coach, as their head coach. Amazing, Aphromoo, Someday, Ryu are all free agents. That's also with Bank. Rumored to be having a buyout. Whether or not it happens or not, it's a different situation. Um, this team needs basically an entirely new team, which they're saying that they're going to go with the, NA, with the NA route, build some homegrown talent, save money. This was the team that I compared to Misfits earlier that they spent a lot of money the last couple of years on getting the big names, paying for to get that success because they're going to win, and then they don't. So um, I just think that this team will take a step back, similar to Misfits, and sign some NA players. I could see a player like DeMonte ended up on this team, and someone like Dardock playing jungle for this team, maybe having another top laner, you know, and maybe getting a, an import support to play along with Bang. Um, as his support from Korea, I think that would work very well for their bot lane to have people who actually speak the same language. Um, so that's that's that for 100 Thieves. Um, not expecting a lot, but I think it'll be a good transition year for them, which is what they desperately need. Yeah, um, they do ha they they do obviously have their young players that they use towards the end of um, the summer split. I don't I don't rate them highly at all. But the likes yeah. of Fragus in the jungle, they had Fragus is actually a free agent. Oh, is he a free agent? Oh. Yeah, Frag <laughs> Fragus is a free agent. They do have Fake God. They have Soligo, Go. But, but Fragus is a free agent. Yeah, so I, I wonder whether they're just going to keep those players and see how that goes, try to develop talent in the similar way that, that, that C9 did. Obviously, they, they've bought in the resources now Yeah. Uh, to go ahead and, and coach and, and you know train up these players, these young players. So Yeah. You know what I just thought of? Go to Dignitas would be someday. 
as their top laner. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Realistically, they could have someday in Huni. Um, so that's interesting to think about. Powerhouses of the past, that is. Or, yeah, of three years ago. Anyway, moving on down to Golden Guardians, they signed the most memeous signing ever, and they signed Golden Glue to have GGS GG as their mid laner. Hanser is being removed, is being rumored to be traded. Obviously, as we just said with Dignitas, Froggins let go, and he's now a free agent. Pepe hands who he is a free agent. Okay, and then their team needs are top if they get rid of Hanser, and then support and AD. Um, this team desperately needs a bot lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's quite sad that Froggen's uh, let go. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if he retired. He can just he could just stream. Yes. Um, he could do what all NA players do when they t retire. They just just stream, uh, live their life that way. Uh, <laughs> he makes a lot of money. Golden Glue's a good. Um, Golden Glue's a really good and interesting trade though, because it, it's likely that they technically counted it as an like an academy trade because it was like C9 Academy to Golden Guardians Academy. Yeah. But it's quite likely, it, it's very likely now that Golden Clue is going to start. Um, so this will be his, like, a proper chance for him to prove himself in the LCS. Yeah, it'll be interesting so because he's my, had... My eyes are on him. He, he's had stints before, just play, and he never really played well outside of C9 when he was being a sub with Jensen. Mm -hmm. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens this year with him, if he decides to play, like, how he plays, and if he can get over those nerves of playing on stage that he's had in the past. Um, but... Definitely could be a pos a very good mid NA homegrown mid laner, which is what this league needs. I think um, it's pretty sad that I've seen him. I've seen him on the on the analyst desk more than I've seen him actually playing. So. Same. <laughs> Moving forward, um, Immortals. Immortals. They signed Xmithy, the former Immortal player who went to TL and then comes back to Immortals. Um, Xmithy joins a roster that includes Dokla, Arrow, and Big. They did not bring back Crown. Crown is a free agent, so this team does need a mid laner. This is another team that could possibly sign a Demonte, a Power of Evil of sorts, and go from there. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so the Optic team, they they were kind of up and down. They they were kind of one of those teams that had like a really good spring split, and then and then summer they kind of fell off. Yes. Um, a lot of teams kind of did that, didn't they? The FlyQuest, Golden Guardians. Yeah. Uh, so it it was it's kind of hard to to judge how this team, like performs overall when you see like one split they're they're at the bottom of the table the next split they're they're clearly in um in playoffs this team will be decided by their mid laner that they sign and how arrow plays because mm, if it's make a big impact. because if they can have a bot lane that actually wins and is shows up every single game then immortals has a chance of being a dark horse in the league not to win the league but to be a playoff contender Whereas if they have Arrow from last year, they probably don't make playoffs. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just... It'll be very interesting to see how this team shows up. They're definitely one of the most question mark teams just because, again, they don't have a mid laner. So we don't really... We can't really speculate. They're one of the few teams in NA that doesn't have a full roster yet. So it's very hard to see what they're going to do and who they're going to sign in that position and then go from there. Yeah, with Crown being like the big player on that team, with that big player. Yeah, I mean, player, like he was much. he was one v fiving some games on that team. <laughs> so like, not signing him is crazy. But I'm sure they just didn't want to pay him, which is fine. I mean, that's they're a brand new org. They just paid twenty five million dollars for a COD team, so I can understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on down to the most boring acquisition in the history of NALCS is FlyQuest signing Ignar. Ignar, washed up support, gets to play with washed up AD carry a wild turtle. Woo! Then they have I mean, I'll I'll be I'll be positive about this, okay? Because Ignar and Wild Turtle do share uh play styles, which is like very aggressive. They they both play very aggressive. They like to so, int, I get it. So it's not gonna be like uh like J it's kinda like a Wild Turtle will just like jump in and JJ's like sort of dragged in as well. It'll be Maybe? Like they'll, they'll both just jump in and they'll either both die or both. Maybe their yeah. bottling will be called the Intnars. The Intnars. <laughs> Intnars. <laughs> yes. And then obviously to round up the FlyQuest team, they still have um, their rookie Viper, who played pretty decently for the top lane, considering the fact he was a rookie. And then they have Santorin, one of the better... He was good in spring. He did not show up in the summer at all. And they have Poe Belter, who played horribly in the summer, to be frankly honest with you. I'm surprised he's still on that team, but it is what it is. They did resign him last see, year. We'll there's still some time left. They signed him last year, so they would have to buy him out. Uh, okay, okay. And I don't think 
anyone wants him, to be perfectly frank, um, unless he just retires. And then... Yeah, it's like you can keep him. <laughs> yeah, unless he retires and becomes a streamer again. Um, then the <laughs> other team, the hottest team that made the biggest trade early on in free agency is Evil Geniuses, which took over Echo Fox's spot. They made the humongous trade to get Sven Skaren away from C9, the MVP of the summer split. Goes to Evil Geniuses with Zezo Kumo definitely. All from C9, basically C9 white, if you want to call them that, or C9 blue or purple, whatever color Evil Geniuses is. And <laughs> they get to play for Evil Geniuses now. This team needs a mid laner, 100% sure, because they don't have a mid laner on their roster with this trade. And then if they're going to keep Zazel, Kumo, and Deathly, which the reports are that they're not, they're actually going to reach buyouts for all three of these players, they'll need to fill in these roles. So top 80 carry and support. All will, so this team basically will be built around Svenskaren and then whoever else they sign if they decide not to keep these players. Yeah, they've definitely made big moves because I think with the Echo Fox team, weren't weren't, weren't they all? Like, they were all released because the yeah because obviously it was a different organization. Yeah, Echo Fox yeah. since the the brand itself disbanded, none of their contracts were were left, so they're all gone. The the staff, everyone, they're all gone. So Evil Genius is literally starting. At at the beginning, they don't have a they don't have a coach signed yet, but they have Vince Garen. So Vince Garen is the face of that franchise, and then going from there, they're gonna have, that's like their selling point, right? And then you have Zazel, Kumo, and Defley, who they can either um, barter and they can put them and they can go play for academy teams and other teams, or they start for their own team as their like if they want to go the cheap route after doing this, they can just keep these players and put in a, and plug in a mid laner like let's say Demonte. And then that's their that's their team, or they can just keep them on their on their academy team and bring in a whole new team if they really want to spend a lot of money. Um, if if I was them, I would keep them on the main team and just try them at least for the spring split or for part of the spring split because they, yeah, they have proven on the stage previous like before that they are. Oh yeah, I mean Kumo Kumo played very well when he was replacing Licorice. Definitely played very well for Sneaky and Zazel looked very good the entire time. Um, Zazel was the one that was more surprised got traded with Svenskaren, but. I think um, C9 just, I guess, saw more in Vulcan, which I wouldn't have rated Vulcan over C over Zazel. But that's it for the LCS. That means we have to do our power rankings for the LCS. Let me pull it up. So LCS, let's see if we can get something that we agree on here. So number one, we're going to uh, go TL. It's going to be it's going to be pretty hard for most of the positions. There, there are some where you're like, okay, they're definitely going to be here. But yeah. Like I said, with the with the alternating performances between spring and summer, like of most the majority of these players, it's it's very hard to put them in certain positions. Yeah, I agree. I've, I've got like a few sort of like set. I think I've got like the first half set, and then yeah, after that, like, it's, it's just it, that's just an like A. All of the rest of them. For, for that's the an A. You can put them all at six. It doesn't matter. <laughs> They're all gonna be around there. So what do you have at one? Uh, so one FTL. Yeah. yeah, I would think TL would be one. Personally, I think TSM will be two. Um, yep, uh, but like they would need to get, you know, I, I think you meant either amazing or uh, Medios. Another jungler, Medios. Um, if if they get amazing, I would I would probably put them at two. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we just see with our coaches. Who would you put at three? Uh, I put C nine. You still I put C nine. I. They still have Licorice. They still have Niski. Um, those but, two players basically. But they have Sven. Them through. They have Sven, but. I mean, they had Sneaky last season, so... True. True. At least so Sneaky could play Ezreal, be, though. It, it's going to be the same story of the solo lanes, basically carrying them through wins. Yep. Is, is why, okay, then who do you have it for? Um, again, this is this is one you're probably going to disagree with me, with, with me on, actually. Okay. Um, I put Evil Geniuses. I can agree. I no, I think I can agree with that. They have, you know, the majority of their team are the components of the second place team yep. from Summer. Yep. Um, I think they're going to perform really well. Yep. Uh, I think they're going to keep those players. The mid laner, as you said, will be like DeMonte. Uh, you know, they can bring in an import because they're they're all uh, res any residents. Yep. Uh, you know, the wall is their ocean in terms of mid laners. They can bring in the best mid laner that they can think of. And Crown. I think they're going to be a very good team. Crown's a good shout. Yep. Who do you have at five? Uh, at five, I have uh, I have I believe I have clutch. Yeah, I have dig. Clutch. Okay. 
or dick. dick this dog. is this dick. is where I would go different. If for, so, for me, I would put Immortals at five, just to be clear. Okay, okay but okay. we'll go with that. Who do you have at six? Uh, like I said, six to ten. I'm literally I don't have a clue. Okay, <laughs> so it will put mine. I'll put Immortals at seven. I have Seal or at six. I have CLG being seven because I don't think they're gonna be a good enough team this year. Um, at eight, I'll put who who has the most more. I'll put FlyQuest. God, I can't believe I'm doing this. And then nine, I'll put Hundred Thieves. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, I, I, I'm taking that back. I'll put Hundred Thieves at eight. Oh, I'm you're, a, so, you're such a fan, dude. I'm not putting FlyQuest <laughs> at nine. I can't. It hurts me. And then ten will be Golden Guardians. Unfortunately, but I just think unless they make we have to see obviously with like so like the thing with Golden Guardians and 100 Thieves is we don't know what the roster is going to be like, right? Because so much of their team is not signed. However, with the pieces, so with the pieces that I see with 100 with 100 Thieves is Zix as the head coach and Bang. Those two pieces alone give me more confidence than FlyQuest does with their team of rejects, is what I'm going to call them. And then <laughs> Golden Guardians, where the only thing that they have is contracts, an unproven commodity in the jungle, and Golden Glue, an unproven commodity in the mid lane. So wh- when you're comparing these bottom three teams, because like I feel like CLG is like a tier above these three teams, right? So you have like the top yeah. seven, and then you have like eight through ten. And eight through ten is like way the hell down there. And like when you're when you're trying to prove eight through ten, you have a world champion in Bang, and you have a proven coach in Ziggs who will be eight. And then you have FlyQuest who like, although they're rejects, like their their team is decent and they normally produce pretty decently. They just didn't produce very well in the summer. It just depends on how um, Pro Belter and Santorin will play. If it's spring Pro Belter and Santorin, or will it be summer? Um, Pro Belter and, and Santorin. That'll be how that team does. So that's why I have a nine. And then Golden Guardians, like the, I don't think they're gonna pay to get a very big team, spend a lot of money. So that's why I have them at ten because I don't. I think they're just gonna pick a bunch of NA players similar to Hundred Thieves, and they're just gonna go with that team. Yeah, I think uh, I think Golden Guardians will actually be similar to how I kind of rated them during the spring and summer split, and that's because with Golden Guardians during then, um, obviously Froggen was their mid laner at the time. And it felt like how well Golden Guardians performed depended on how well Froggen performed. It's 100% the fact, yeah. I agree. And I think that'll be the same with Golden Glue, even if he, even if he performs as well as his, like, as well as his potential. Mm-hmm. I think the how well they do in games will be completely dependent on on him in the mid lane. And if Hanser's still on that team, because Hanser played very well last year, so if Hanser's still on that team, they might be a little better. But I have a funny feeling he won't be there. And the other thing as well is, like, from a draft perspective, what made uh, Golden Guardians very strong is that you couldn't ban out Frogan's champion pool. Yeah. He had a champion ocean. It would be really hard to play against him in the mid lane because of that. And, and they now cre- they basically lost that quality. Yeah, and, so they, and they had... Cre- the draft, and they're going to be a lot weaker. Yeah, and they, and they had creative picks, too, with their coach and arrow. Mm-hmm. So, moving on to the meat, a.k.a. the teams, that the regions that don't give us any fun news, is the LCK and the LPL. We'll start with the LCK because they give us the most amount of news. Very surprising news, actually, um, as an LCK fan myself. Mm-hmm. Some of these moves are very surprising. Some of them not so much. Uh, we'll go into more detail about now. SKT, um, the number one team in the LCK, made a lot of moves today. They let go of Coma, their head coach, who's been with that team since Faker has been there. So we'll see what happens now. With the, I would have never thought there would be a chance where Faker was not under Coma. I would have always thought that Faker would have retired before Coma did. But now they no longer have Coma. They let go of Mata, who really didn't really play that much um, outside the beginning part of the split, just because effort had showed more. And then Clid, which was by far to me the best player on SKT this year, gets let go. Khan as well. He was kind of uh, he was the definition of a coin flip top laner, where some games he's hard carrying, the other games he's like 0 and 8. Um, so he gets released. Um, I'm not upset with the Khan. I'm a little. I'm very upset with the with the Clid, because like I said, I think Clid was the best player on that team this year. Faker gets extended, obviously. And that effort was a big surprise extend, but they just like how he played throughout the year. So that's it for SKT's side of the news. Yeah, um, with I'll, I'll start off with Khan, okay? Because Khan, like you said, I, I think domestically he was more of a coin flip. When he performed at Worlds, I actually think he performed super well. 
I yeah, believe. I definitely think he stepped up at Worlds, but at, at domestic he was a coin flip. Which the thing is that like a lot of people who watch don't watch LCK; they just watch Worlds when it comes to Korean teams, so they won't see that side of it. But as someone who watches LCK or, or, like organically, and just I spend all my nights watching it, I just feel like he's not that good of a player. Yeah, I think the the only one that I don't really find surprising at all there is Mata. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know he's an older player. He's probably going to retire. Uh, former world champion, and now he's just sort of sitting on the bench. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised at all that he that he was released. Um, we'll have to see whether he goes to another team or whether he just straight retires. Uh, obviously, because he's been in the league for a very long time. Uh, yep. As long as I can remember, actually. <laughs> so. Yeah, for real. Um, so moving on, we have something that if you have been following the scene of Griffin, you're not surprised by this move. I'm not surprised by it. Cho is the GM of Griffin that forced now what was all the allegations against Griffin back in Korea. Obviously, if you're not really looking into LCK, you don't know what's going on with Griffin, but Griffin has a lot of us, a lot of allegations against them and their former coach, who is now the coach of Dragon X. Um, so Cho has now resigned due to these pressures of legal threats, basically, and allegations. So he steps down. Um, Griffin does, however, re-sign all five of their players. So none of Griffin's players are going anywhere. Although Tarzan and Chobi were literally rumored to go anywhere in the anywhere in the world, because that's like people wanted them that badly. Um, but all five of their players will stay the same. Um, Doran is the only one that's still a free agent. They have not decided they want to bring him back. But it looks like Griffin might just be running it back with a different coach this year. Yeah, I mean, I'm first of all, I'm really glad that they um, re-signed all of their players because that's literally the identity of Griffin, right? These players brought them up to the LCK. Yep. And it's kind of like a it gives me like a C9 esque where like the the like original C9 where like these are the players that that essentially made the organization, you know. Yeah. At least as far as League of Legends goes. Yeah. Um I don't know if Griffin's actually part of any other esports, but um uh you you know they're they're a very young team, very talented. Uh they play with each other very well. Uh so I'm really glad to see them all together. Uh but Obviously, there was a lot of, you know, there was a, there was a lot of negativity coming out of uh, what was going on with Griffin. So it's good that they resigned the GM. Uh, I think it's good for them to just like start a clean slate, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, put the sort of put the drama sort of behind them and like move forward, you know. Yep. Um, which I'm very surprised. I'm very surprised that Griffin were able to play so well with everything that was going on, considering it was during Worlds. Yes, that all this was happening. Uh, yeah, they released their coach a week before Worlds, which mm -hmm. makes it crazy. Um, moving I forward... Them, I had them like rated so low, like to perform so badly at Worlds because of that, but they actually ended up playing... Yeah, that they played very well. Um, moving moving on, we'll just hit these really quickly because they're not really that much important. Steph re-signs with Dragon X to be expected, although there was rumors she might go to EG, back to LPL with EDG. Um, Gen G released eight of their players, including including Kuve, Peanut, and Fly. Um Peanut's been rumored to go to NA teams, um, fly as well. Kuve has been tr looking for more to sticking to um, Korean teams. Fly actually ended up then signing with Afrika, so that shuts down that rumor. And then uh, Afrika lets go of Aiming and Yukao. Yukao has been the other player that was rumored to go to Liquid, actually, to become the mid laner, um, but that fell through. So Yukao is still obviously a free agent that can go either to Korea or to any other region if he wants. And then um, KT lets go of Smeb, Score, BDD, and Prey. Um, I could see Smeb going on another roster because he actually played pretty well. But BDD had an off year, but he's always been a great player. So he's another player that can end up anywhere in the world. Um, yeah, I think Genji, Afrika, and KT were all sort of teams that were like expected to do really well but didn't do as well as expected yes um obviously because i, I guess it was kind of hard to judge the uh the lck this split with because i i felt like all the teams in the lck were just stacked um the top the top down one and, and griffin and then you have all of these teams with like veteran players as well well and the top six teams in the lck had 10 wins exactly africa uh, africa made the playoffs, I think as the five seed and they had ten wins. And they had to play against SKT, the best team in the region. Mm -hmm. Because SKT lost games in the middle of the year. So they went from 
like that region was so competitive that it was just kind of unjust and unfair. I mean, like Gen G had nine wins and they didn't make playoffs. Dragon X had nine wins that didn't make playoffs. So like, it was a very. Cl- There's just LCK actually has so many good domestic teams that unfortunately they didn't really show it this year in international stage. But like thinking of you have to come back and you have to play against Griffin, Don Juan Gaming, SKT, um, Sandbox, Sandbox, um, oh, Dragon X, like Gen G. There's so many good teams in Korea. It'll make it very interesting to see what happens the rest of the year, especially with. The moves that SKT makes, more importantly. Moving on down to the LPL, unfortunately, there's not that much to go to right now, except for the fact that Imp retired from JDG Gaming, and then there are rumors that Doinby is going to retire as the world champion. Um, Kind of fitting. I hope he does. I think he's a great player, but he's been playing since Season 1, so maybe it's time for him to retire. Yeah, and end the, uh, end the career on a high. Two, I, two uh, world champions there. Yes, two amazing That's players. Two players that, I mean, I, I didn't... I'll be fair. I didn't really know Doin B. Like I knew of Doin B, but I didn't know how great he was until this Worlds. But Imp, I have followed since the World Championship when he won it, and even till this day, he played very well for JD Gaming. So, and when he played on, oh, what was the name of the team? What Samsung White? No, the meme team that he played for after. Oh, um, LGD. I, I don't- LGD, <laughs> LGD, that's what it was, LGD. So even when they had Gold V as their mid laner in LGD, he was still a very good player, Imp was. So um, sad to see these two go, possibly, but um, I still think the LPL is the best region in the world, and their teams are stacked, and there's a lot of moving parts with the LPL. Carson's a free agent. There's a bunch of different players that are rumored to be going to the LPL from Korea, which is very interesting. So but lots of moving parts. Well, but Korean players have been going to uh, LPL a lot. Yeah, especially recently. Mm-hmm. But that'll do it for us, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more of this, please like and subscribe. So that way we know we can do more of these moving forward. We are planning on doing a lot more of like week-by-week week sessions once these se- once the season start of like the LEC and the LCS in particular of going over like what we think of how they're doing, who do we think is the best teams, and so on and so forth. We'll be excited. But thank you guys again for watching and have yourself a good night.